Hello, I'm Malcolm Raggett and I make the Felstead Skyver. It's for pairing leather in bookbinding. In this video we're going to have a look at a book construction called the Disappearing Spine Binding where the spine part is made of leather and I'm going to demonstrate how we can create that leather strip and put together this book. Let's just zoom in and have a little look at the completed book in a little more detail. So this is the book I'm going to demonstrate. A disappearing spine with separate front and back covers. You can cover those in whatever material you like. I'm putting on here a fairly white clean buckram, but paper or book cloth works quite well. And the spine I like to make as leather because that is a, a good hinge material. It consists of a block, end papers, a spine and the two front and back covers. Two key construction points are that the end papers have a small concertina in hinge in them, front and back, and that means that the end papers will allow the covers to open completely without putting any strain or restriction down there. And the other thing is that if you open, I like my books to open flat, if you open the book, you'll see that it's built on a hollow on the spine there, and that allows it to lay flat so that we can write notes quite easily. I'm going to show you very briefly each stage of that process of making this book, and then in more detail I'm going to come back and have a look at how we create that leather hinge, because the point is to demonstrate the skyver and how we can use it. First we assemble the block, put the signatures together in the normal way. You can sew the signatures onto cords or tape, but I'm going to use a Tyvek approach which involves slitting a sheet of Tyvek, punching the holes as you normally would using a template and an awl, and then sewing the signatures onto the Tyvek. Once the sewn signatures are put together, you can glue the reinforcing strips around the edge of the block and glue on the end papers. Here's a view of the block finished to size with the end papers. Notice that the concertina hinge of the end paper and also the hollow. I've made the hollow out of Tyvek, but you can use any other appropriate material. Once we've got the block finished to size, we can then cut some boards. I happen to like a fairly small square around the edge of my book, about a millimetre. This is only a notebook. And now we need to cut a strip of leather for the hinge. We want to have a thickness for the block and 15 millimetres each side and 10 millimetres at the head and the tail. Here's a sketch, roughly what I mean, and I'm aiming for the taper all, all the way round on the piece of leather. First I hand skive a feather edge all the way round. This prevents the razor blade from catching and tearing the leather on the machine when preparing the taper. Now I move to the pairing machine and I reduce the thickness of the whole piece of leather down to 0.5 of a millimetre. I find 0.5 of a millimetre is a good hinge size and since it's a fairly thin book I don't worry about um, having particular areas for the hinge. I just thin the whole thing down to 0.5 of a millimetre. Now I set up the taper. Here I'm using a one millimetre gauge over a 20 millimetre distance. That's a one in 20 taper. I'm going to Apply that 1 in 20 taper all the way around the piece of leather. First of all I do the left hand cut on all four edges. Then I reset the taper and do the right hand cut on all four edges. That leaves me with all four edges fully tapered. Now I put some guide marks on with a pencil 
and because I'm going to use EVA I don't bother to pre-wet the leather. Glue up the leather, put the block onto the leather, slip the leather where it's going to go into the hollow. The front and back covers can be covered with whatever material you find appropriate and this is a good stage at which to do any decoration on the covers as well. If Trim off a millimetre or two of the outer end paper to allow for your expansion when it gets wet. Glue on the covers and there's your final book. So let's have a look at how we create the leather spine in a bit more detail. We're going to start with a piece of black leather cut to the size that we need for our book box about 10 millimetres oversized top and bottom and with about a 15 millimetre wrap around there. What we want to end up with is a piece of leather that is about half a millimetre thick and tapers off for about 15 millimetres there to a pretty fine edge. Now I've got two paring knives here, but you don't have to have that. You can use a scalpel or a regular paring knife. But the point is that you can use a paring knife just to thin the edge down. You're not trying to get the taper at this stage, that's what the machine's for. I start a little over halfway up. Get off a chunk of leather. Do the same in the other direction. Probably won't have got it down exactly right. It's still a little rounded, a bit thicker in places. So a second cut is perfectly normal. Just take it down to a feather all the way along the edge. It doesn't matter if your edges are a bit rough and ragged, they're going to be hidden. When they go over, they get the cover stuck on top of them, so they don't have to look pretty. Need to do all four edges like that. These corners will be cut anyway. Um, so then we do the other two just like that. Now we've got all four edges pared down to a feather edge. The next stage is to reduce the thickness overall from one millimeter to 0.5 of a millimeter. Just want to check that the leather is pretty evenly thicknessed. Yep, that's pretty good. Not taking much off there. Now I increment the thumb wheel which moves the anvil up 0.2 millimetres, so that's two notches on the thumb wheel.
and we'll check the thickness. So let's come down to 0.8 of a millimetre. And take two more notches, that should get us down to 0.6. And we'll see how the leather feels. Let's see what that's like. Yep, that's down to 0.6. So we'll take one more notch off. It still feels a little stiff. Another notch should get us down to 0.5. Yep, 0.5, and that feels nice for a hinge. Now I need to make a taper all the way around, all four edges, and I want to go from zero to a half a millimeter over a 15 millimeter width which is a 30 to 1 taper, or 30 millimetres to 1 millimetre. So now I need to set up a 30 to 1 taper on here. On the Felstead Skyver, we set up a taper by releasing this knob, and then we can swing the anvil backwards and forwards. So I'm going to set up, roughly, the right taper. Move the anvil up or down until it just touches on the left hand side. Then I use a board that's one millimeter thick. Move it along until it just touches the blade. And then measure that taper. And that's a one in 25. So that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a one in 30. So I just need to move the Anvil to an angle, try it again, just there, that's a little bit more than a 1 in 30, but only by a couple of millimetres, I think that will do, make sure that's tight, and that's now set so that we can do all of the left hand cuts, so Take it in several goes, see the general idea. What you don't want to do is go anywhere near that feather edge because the razor will pick it up and tear it. In fact, what I would advise is retracting, retract back until there is a clearance between there of about the thickness of a 40 gram piece of paper. That way there is no danger, or should I say there is reduced danger of it picking up. I'm always watching that feather edge to make sure that it's not getting close to the razor blade. Now 
it's getting very, very close. So I back off a bit to the right by a millimeter or two. Clear the swarf so that you can see what's going on. And then we repeat that for the other two edges. When you've done as much as you can on the left hand taper like that, then we need to switch it over to the right hand taper. Now if you just move it up again so that the anvil and blade are just in contact, there, you can swing the anvil over so that it just comes into contact on the right hand side. And then you've got the 31 taper in the opposite direction to check that a piece of paper will go through there and it will just. So now we go back and we take a few cuts off now to get that last of the taper off there. Good, and now we do it for the other two corners to finish off that taper all the way around. All that remains now is to assemble the various parts of the book. We've got the leather spine, we've got the block, we've got a couple of covers here, front and back, and with the tooling already done. So we need to put a generous helping of EVA well into that spine. I'm not too worried about the corners where my fingers are because I'll be cutting them off later anyway. Because EVA is quite a rapid adhesive. I don't bother pre-wetting that. I'd already put some marks on the leather so that I have some guidelines to work to. And then I put the block down, making sure that the concertina end papers are well in there. Before I wrap it round, I'm just going to make sure that the hollow is well adhered. Next I cut the turnover to go down the hollows.
you need a fine point for the tuck in. Off that tab. That one. The last operation is to glue on the front and back cover. Just position it correctly. And then I've got a piece of low tack tape which I make even lower tack by sticking it down on a piece of plastic first. And that becomes my mask for the glue on this face. And then we paste up that with EVA again. Make sure you do a second coat on the leather because that will have absorbed quite a bit of adhesive. We want to make sure that's got a certain amount of stick and it's probably quite a good idea actually just to wet the edge of the board there because that will absorb some more adhesive. Make sure that you get the correct squares top and bottom equal and if you match it up to the Masking tape. Now we just gently got to get those creases out of there. Always the trouble with thin paper. It expands at a different rate. bit of acetate in there to prevent any glue that might come through that thin paper sticking the end paper together. And I'll repeat that for this surface here. Once you've got both front and back covers pasted up and on, the two acetate sheets in there to prevent the end paper sticking together you can put some blotting paper there, not that that plasticised buckram is going to let much moisture through, but it's good practice. And either put it in a press or under a board with a bit of weight on it. Leave that one overnight. So here's the finished notebook with its leather disappearing spine, a buckram cover and its lay flat structure which is just how I like it.